Every year in the NFL, it's a new team. As far as goals go, we have one. Putting a f***ing ring on our finger. Welcome to the Buccaneers Observer Podcast. This is Ralph Phillips. I'm Molly Bay. Today is September 20th, 2021. We call this Victory Monday. Mm-hmm. Victory Monday. Get used to these. We got 17 of them coming up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, hey, I'm going to say this. Entertaining game. It's, it was almost perfect in what you want in a football game. We looked great. I mean, just... Oh my gosh, we were just awesome, uh, but you know we we allowed them to come in, make it a little bit entertaining mm-hmm. you know, within three. A little bit of a nail biter there mm-hmm. for a minute, uh, and then we just stomped them in. The Put ground. it away. Looked uh, looked the just totally dominant. We're 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 a totally dominant team. Now you can say what you want about the Atlanta Falcons. They put up a pretty decent fight, kind of like Dallas. You know, I mean, t- I'm telling you, teams are going to play their A plus game against us, and if they don't, they're just going to get humiliated. Now we're going to see l- later in the year, teams are going to come in and try and be all like, "Oh, tough with us," and we're just going to start stomping them. And they're just going to quit halfway through the game. We're going to see a lot of that coming up. But I, I I'm sorry, I'm I'm going to say this. I've been saying it ever since the Super Bowl. But we are the best team that has ever been on an NFL football field. I'm sorry. You just, we're breaking records left and right. We're breaking records so much that you can't even keep up with them. I know. And and, and we're just pretty much dominating games. I mean, so far in two weeks, we've uh, had the lead. What would we have the, the lead for less than, uh, I think in week one, we they had the lead for like a minute. Anybody? Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, it was it was like one point. Your video's all stuttering. I know. I'm trying to open a window. I forgot. Um, yeah, I think at one point they had like a one or two point lead. Yeah, yeah. And then it, that was over. It was very briefly, and you know, it wasn't it wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, Atlanta got within three of us and everything. But I mean, come on, guys, we have scored thirty points. Nine games in a row, we've scored over 30 points. In this game, we scored, what, 49, 48 points? 48. 40, 48 points. <laughs> Tom Brady has scored nine touchdowns in two games. Oh, my gosh. At this pace, what? good Lord, he's going to have 100 touchdowns. <laughs> I know. Well, someone was saying Jameis Winston has the record for most touchdowns. For the Bucks, yeah, yeah, thirty-three. No, no, not in a season, oh, a career, oh, a career, yeah. and Tom, it was like one hundred and twenty touchdowns or something. Mm-hmm. And Tom Brady now has forty already from yeah. last season and this season. So, mm-hmm. should he stay through the three years, he might shatter that one. It's just, it's it's just ridiculous. So, you know, like I said, you know, we're we're head and shoulders above everybody, and you know it. We're not struggling out there. You know, I mean, you see, you see, uh, you know, people, of course, are criticizing and nitpicking things like the penalties and lack of a run game and uh, not targeting guys or, you know, our defensive secondary and all that. But I mean, <laughs> come on, there's, like, there's, how can you clean up a game 48 to 25 and then still be where, complaining where your secondary scores two touchdowns in a quarter? Uh, they constantly harassed Matt Ryan, or the the defensive line did the whole game. I mean, he was running the whole time. I mean, our defense was fine. The penalties, we'll get to that in a minute. But the you know people complaining about penalties. You know, we we talked about this enough. But uh, half of those penalties were not should not have been penalties. Those were the refs' penalties. Penalties on the refs. Can we do that? Mm-hmm. And the, you know, it's just. We don't have any weaknesses. We don't. We don't have any weaknesses, and we have so many elite players on this team. And he, at a, every position's got elite players, except for you. You could say maybe our cornerbacks are not elite, elite. But yeah, you know, come on. 
They're, I would say they're not elite because they've only been in the league. I think our oldest one is Carlton Davis, who's mm-hmm. been in four years. So he's not elite yet. Yeah. yeah he you, certainly will be in that conversation. He's close to a shutdown corner, but he's not a complete shutdown corner. But, I mean, come on. How much more do you need? We have a totally elite linebacker core, totally elite uh uh, the defensive line, uh, totally elite offensive line, totally elite wide receivers, totally elite t- tight ends, totally elite quarterback. Our second, our safeties, I think you could say, you know, are elite. I put Winfield in the elite level and Whitehead and Edwards. <laughs> you know, the, these guys are top of the line. And you're going to sit around and complain about our secondary, our cornerbacks. Well, they're not elite. That's, you know, we need to do something about that. Come on, man. Just that's a that's the kind of stuff I can't stand. As you could tell, I was listening to podcasts last night. Oh no, like, man! These guys, how could you? How could you be upset at the performance we're putting out there on the field? Best. Do you want to name the podcast? Yeah, Rick Stroud. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just it's ridiculous. He's been watching. He's been watching the covering the Buccaneers for thirty years. He's going to complain about this, the penalties and the secondary yeah, it's just shut up well it was the same narrative at the beginning of last season i actually went back through our instagram to see what the talk was and of course it was penalties and mm-hmm. then it was also brady had no arm <laughs> at this point you're like you people are a joke like stop it and, and the lack of tight end involvement mm-hmm. remember that no run were. game oh and then there was the uh there was a an issue between Brady and Aaron's mm-hmm. and they really tried to pound that one on. And the Mike Evans not getting enough yardage, mm-hmm. which I thought that was funny. That was the narrative from the first game was Mike Evans did not get enough yardage. He was our leading receiver in this game with 75 yards and two touchdowns. So yeah. it's like anytime y'all bitch about how the team performs, they just come out the next week and just embarrass you. Yes. Well, we just have so many ways of embarrassing you. I mean, it's mm-hmm. ridiculous. So if you're gonna, if, if people are gonna complain, well, you're not embarrassing them this way. You're not embarrassing them with your tight ends. <laughs> we'll go. Okay, we'll do that. Let's you're not try embarrassing that. them with your running backs. <laughs> okay, we'll do that. <laughs> okay, the running backs. Can we stop? Can we stop this? Like, we're not a running team. Look at we're our wide receiver. We're not going to be a running team. Mm-mm. It's just not going to happen. Look at our receiver core and tell me why we need a run game. Right. Can anyone explain that Bruce to me? Bruce Arians has never had a run game. He just, it's a secondary thought for him. He only does it because he has to. He's a, he, he talks about it in his book, how he wants, in theory, a balanced approach. We've never had that, though. We're not going to. Just stop. Yes. Yeah, just stop. Just stop. <laughs> it's so embar- – you embarrass <laughs> so, yourself. It, well, people are just so used to criticizing, you know, especially the Buccaneers because yeah. you know, we've been bad for Well, and everyone hates Brady, so they just – Mm-hmm. whatever they can find, they will. But if you weren't entertained by that game, and if you weren't entertained by the Dallas game, I don't know what to tell you. You just need to stop watching football because those are two <laughs> great games, entertaining, nail-biting at points. Uh, you know, But we we played great football in both games. You know, It wasn't sloppy. It's not like we barely squeaked out a win. You know, We, we pretty much dominated both teams. And it's going to just be like that all year long. My my biggest worry is that they're not going to be entertaining because we're just going to start stomping people so badly. And they're going to give up. Yeah. I'm very much looking forward to the Rams game. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I'm looking forward to it. but I'm, Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm just, I know. It's the one that I've had circled on the schedule all year. I was like, ugh. I know. Um, I will one. say I think our tackling is a little rusty. they got to clean that up a little bit. That That's my only complaint. I yeah. thought there were times yesterday. I saw a few with Devin White, mm-hmm. uh, some with like Winfield, yeah, where Winfield they and... weren't wrapping up. Mm-hmm. Guys were getting right through their arms. But yeah. I think that's just the thing. They're just rusty. I think it comes with the season. Yeah. I think they'll be fine. I just it's it's getting back up to game speed, and they're just not quite there yet. And but you, you know that's happens. something that's something I complained about last year pretty much all year is just our tackling is not i wouldn't say it's elite we don't have elite tackling we have some elite tacklers but you know, we got some guys on the team that just uh, it is i don't think we practice it a lot and you know we just kind of expect you to be able to do it so it's not something we focus on uh, yeah there was the big 
catch and run by Patterson. Remember, he stepped out of bounds. If he mm-hmm. wouldn't have stepped out of bounds, it would have been a touchdown. But yeah, uh, Cockerell and Winfield, no, Whitehead, both mistackled him. So, yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, we got to clean up little things like that. But I, again, I just think it's, they're not quite at game speed yet. Yeah. And, and Again, it's a minor issue. It's kind of like how well, all year last year we bitched about our special teams. It was just a minor issue. It's like, eh. Yeah, no, look at them. Well, I think that when one side of the ball or one particular position group is lacking, that's when the other guys always step up. And in the past, we've had it where it kind of was a cascade where – one group wasn't doing well, and then that put pressure on the other groups, and they did not perform. But that's not under Brady. That's not what happens. It's like one group maybe underperforms a little bit, and then the other ones just light it up. Mm-hmm. So it's not even mm-hmm. – I mean, you can complain about it, but at the end of the day, you're scoring. You know, you have 23 points on your opponent, and who cares? Right. Yeah, And it's not like it was accidental or we – fell backwards into scoring those points. I mean, mm-hmm. we, we left a lot of points on the field. Yeah. You know, and the refs really helped them a lot with getting their points. So, you know, whatever. Uh, before we get into really going into detail in the game, we've got to cover a couple of things. Uh, kind of a fact check follow-up. Uh, Levante David was fined $12,875 for unsportsmanlike conduct last week against in the Dallas game for taking off his helmet and slamming it after a near interception in the opener against the Cowboys. Uh, no, no, there was no flag on the thing, which is great because, mm-hmm. you know, we talk about he's only had seven penalties in his nine-year career, which is just <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So ridiculous. And uh, I, I was under the assumption that the helmet rule, taking your helmet off on the playing field, was not being flagged or is not, it, it's not something they're – concerned with anymore because over the past few years I've seen players do it all the time and they never get flagged anymore. So uh, maybe they're not flagging them. They're uh, just finding, finding them. Instead. Which makes sense. That's how it should be. That's how it should be with this taunting stuff too. Uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit there, about this game. But, you know, there, there are certain penalties that affect the game. You know, holding, it affects the actual play. It affects the outcome of the play. Uh, pass interference, it affects the outcome of the pay. So you want to penalize those. You want to say, no, you, you screwed up. You you know, the play could have gone a different way. With the, these, some of these subjective or silly penalties, you know, like taking your helmet off after the play or taunting, it's not, it doesn't affect the play. But yet you're giving the referees the power to affect the game. You know, they're, they, they should be fined. And it shouldn't be a penalty on the field. You shouldn't be penalized the rest of the team and the viewership, the fans, you know, for a guy taunting. It has nothing to do with the game. It's not going to affect the play. The play's already over, you know. So uh, it's something that I think that the NFL really needs to start considering, you know, to find players instead of flagging them or whatever. Or, or write them a strongly worded email. I don't know. It's just ridiculous. But anyhow – uh, Levante David did not get a penalty, so he's still at seven. The uh, There's a kind of a little segue here I'm going to do. Is it mandatory? And I'll, I'm asking this to anybody out there. You know, they have to – or they are they have six social justice messages that they can wear on the back of their helmets, right? We've named them off here. Is it mandatory? Because I haven't seen anybody without one. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I've been looking, but I haven't seen anybody. Is it a mandatory thing? Now, that'd be screwed up. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, if anybody knows, let me know. If you've seen a player out there without the, a message on the back of their helmet, let me know. Because I haven't. I haven't seen it, and I've been mm-hmm. looking. Uh, which brings us into gay stats. <laughs> Our boy Carl Nassib, the first openly active NFL gay player, didn't have so much so, such a good week last week, this Sunday. Uh, they played against Pittsburgh. They ended up winning. So Oakland is 2-0. and oh, And Pittsburgh is not a team to mess, up, mess with. They're, Las Vegas. They're not Oakland anymore. Oh, yeah, remember? Okay. Yeah. We need, to, we need to package this, all these teams in the I one. Know. Year. I know. I hate like it the, o- the Oakland so Redskins. I know. 
<laughs> Just retire all these names. Yes. Okay. So uh, our first openly active NFL gay player got one tackle. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> he played 21 defensive snaps, which is about 38% of the the defensive snaps, which was less than he did in week one. I think he was up around 43%. Uh, and he had three special team snaps. And so he got he got one tackle in 21 snaps. Well, 20 and 24, if you include special teams. So that means he is the first openly gay NFL player to record four tackles, a quarterback hit, and a forced fumble in the history of the NFL. He's moving on up, one one tackle at a time. You would think with his historic performance the first game, he would have got more playing time this week. Yeah, well, you know, it's John Gruden, man. He is not going to do that. If you get attention, he's going to cut you down. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's John Gruden's team. That's his system. Buddy. Yeah. It's Maybe just... John Gruden should come out as gay. Then, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, so, on to the game. We just rewatched it, and what do you think? Did anything change in your mind about it, or no? I mean, I, I disagree with you, Ralph. I think it was sloppier than uh, I would have liked. Really, I do. Uh, the tackling says, um, you know, Brady getting sacked three times. He had a fumble. Not a fan of that. I'm not saying you know cut him, mm. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not, you know, uh, Leonard Fournette had a fumble to, you know, I just, um, on offense, I just thought we're not as cohesive as I would like to see. Mm -hmm. I do think we're knocking the rust off. I'm not worried about it per se, mm -hmm. but I don't think it was one of our best games. Yeah. Uh, Tom Brady was not... He, he was a little inaccurate compared to how he normally is in that game. He was throwing passes low. Some he threw a couple, little 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 long. Had a beautiful one to Mike Evans, which you know again I I think Mike Evans screwed up on that one a little bit because mm -hmm. he didn't even try. He didn't you know he had two catches like that where he didn't even stick his arms out. You know he should have laid out for that one, but Mike Evans is just not a lay it out guy. I wonder if they're getting a little spoiled that it's like. <laughs> You know, that it's normally right in the bread basket. Yeah. But if it's not, they're not even going to try because yes. they're not used to laying out. And Tom Brady threw almost an interception. It, it was obvious the miscommunication between Evans and Brady. Uh, it looked like a stop route, and Evans kept going, and Tom Brady threw it, and the Atlanta guy turned around, and it, it bounced right out of his hand. It should have been an interception. Well, and then there was another one that was nearly picked off to Antonio Brown. And, in fact, the defender tipped it up. Antonio Brown, I thought, could have caught it Yeah, after yeah, it was yeah. tipped. Mm -hmm. I was a little irritated with that, mostly because he's on my fantasy team. Well, he was standing out of bounds. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And so it was, okay, gotcha, right. gotcha. So that would have been null and void anyway. Mm -hmm. um, the penalties, I thought, were absolutely bullshit. Oh, gosh. Just ridiculous. Just uh, and, and you mentioned Tom Brady fumbling the ball. That should have been a forward pass. His arm was moving. He had control of the ball. It was moving when it got hit, you know, and it fumbled out. I don't know how they said that was a fumble. You, know, you look at it on the replay, you can clear, clearly see his arms moving forward with control of the ball, you know. I, what did you think about the sacks? I mean, we gave up three sacks. Uh, <clears throat> well, he had great protection. You know, I, I particularly watched that during the game. Uh, there was a couple of times, you know, there was the one time where Ronald Jones forgot to pick up a blitzer and, you know, he he just came straight mm -hmm. in and got Tom Brady. Okay. But, but no, Tom Brady had all day in the world back there to throw. I mean, he wasn't scrambling around a whole lot and everything. I mean, he did get the one scramble. Right, I know, he? and I was, you saw, I was, I almost had a heart attack. I was like, Brady, what are you doing? <laughs> no. He looks so slow, too. Yeah. And uh, thankfully, he slid. Yeah. You know, I don't know what's going on with quarterbacks in the league, but they're, they're looking sloppy. You know, they're making all these silly throws and awkward angles. I think they're all trying to get highlight reels or something. Yeah, they're, it's the Pat Mahomes. Though. Yeah, the Pat Mahomes effect. Crazy. And, and they're not, yeah. they're, none of them are sliding. You know, they're all going head first. 
you know, Tom Brady, huh? He was just like, okay, I got the first down. I'm going to slap. He <laughs> Done. Like, yeah, he was like two Done. yards from the end zone. He was like, I ain't, I ain't trying to get hit. <laughs> I gave the first down. That's all I care about. Yeah. But then the the penalty where Shaq Barrett was called for offsides, that was on a third down. That was a kind of a crucial thing. And that started three penalties in a row. They st- Atlanta got the ball. This was right before the half. It was, uh, I think they had just a few seconds left. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, yeah, it was right. less than a minute. 20 seconds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they got the ball on uh, the 35, on R35. So they were de- they were pretty much the other end of the field. They didn't get a single offensive yard and scored a field goal because they got three penalties back to back. The one penalty was Shaq Barrett go- going offsides. Uh, he was not offsides. He timed it perfectly. And even the announcers, you know, after the, after the replay, they were like, wow, that was perfect timing. And and Shaq Barrett got to Matt Ryan on that play, forced him to fumble. Uh, I think it was Devin White picked it up and ran it in for, for a pick six. He, no, it was Carlton Davis. No, wait a uh. minute. I'm not, I can't remember who it was that – uh, picked the ball up, but ran it in. It would have been a touchdown, a defensive touchdown. But it got called back because the refs are stupid. Then the very next play, uh, Carlton Davis gets called for. At least I think that was the very next play. Yeah, he got he gets called for uh, unnecessary roughness. He hit the wide receiver, and his helmet like hit that guy's helmet. You know, as he was pushing him out of bounds, basically. So, you know, you're like, come on, man. So they added another 15 yards. And then uh, JPP got offsides. He was offsides. And that put him in field goal range. And then, and then they kicked a field goal. So, you know, you're like, come on, refs. This is getting ridiculous. You know, they they, they ended up scoring. That that put them at uh, 20, 21-10. Yeah, at that point, it was 21-7. And so they got, in 20 seconds, they got to move down the field, thanks to the refs, and kick a field goal. You're like, come on, It's a man. gift. Yeah. I, that taunting penalty yeah. at the end. Okay, I watched a compilation of taunting penalties from the weekend. The first one that I watched was Houston Texans. Mm-hmm. Uh, and whoever they play, I can't remember who they played. But... It was one of those where they, the receiver got a first down, touchdown, whatever, Mm -hmm. spun the ball in front of the defender, Mm -hmm. got a penalty. There was an identical play I watched. We were watching the Cardinals Vikings game, Mm -hmm. and it was identical. The guy did that, not called in that game was called in the Texans game. Mm-hmm. It's just this taunting thing has got to go. Yeah. It's got to go. It's, it makes no sense. It's so inconsistent. It's completely mm-hmm. subjective. They just got to take it out of the game. I mean, it Well, it's it's dumb. Well, I mean, what's I don't understand what it's what the purpose what of it is. What problem is it trying to address? Yeah. Stop being meanies? Yeah. Or something. But like the Carlton Davis taunting, which didn't affect us, you know, because we were up by twenty some points at that point with the mate, Mike Edwards. <laughs> Mike Edwards, uh, you know, with only a few minutes left to play, the game was pretty much over. But you know, still, he got a taunting penalty, and I don't know why. He was running in the end zone. Matt Ryan was chasing him. He was, Matt Ryan was a good five yards behind him, and Edwards turned around and ran backwards into the end zone. I I don't know where the taunting was. The referee that threw the flag was like 10 yards away. He was actually behind Matt Ryan. Did Mike Edwards say something to Matt Ryan? Did he make a mean face to him? Uh, you know, did he hurt his fifis? I, I, I just, I don't know what happened. I don't know where the taunting was. Is is that the thing you can't turn, you have to go into the end zone facing the end zone? Is that No eye contact. <laughs> no, no eye contact. <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. it. And it's going to, it's, it's going to affect the game too much. We're putting too much into the refs' hands. I don't. I don't want the refs to have anything to do with deciding a game in that aspect. What? Well, it's just dumb. There's no point. It's like they were just like, oh, we're just going to arbitrarily make this an issue when it never was an issue before. 
Yeah. You know how you fix taunting? You let the other guy punch him in the face. Right. Yes. That stops taunting real quick. And it makes it a hell of a lot more entertaining for us fans. <laughs> I'm saying. And then you throw a flag for unnecessary roughness or whatever. Yes. Fine. Whatever. But taunting, you hurt their feelings. Stop it. Yeah, Grown I, ass men. I, I don't get it. Don't know. But the, the refs, you know, they missed a lot of holding. They missed, there was a horse collar tackle on Ronald Jones. I mean, you called it out immediately. Yeah. You were like, whoa. Yeah. I mean, the guy just grabbed Ronald Jones by the horse collar, by the back of the nap of the neck, and he yanked him straight down. It was in the pile, but mm -hmm. it was plainly obvious. Yeah. And, of course, they didn't call that. No. Uh, there was a lot of holding going on, especially with uh, Barrett and uh, uh, Vita. Uh, let me see. It just it, it was not a well refereed game. It, Carl Jeffers was the crew. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I tried to look that up when we were doing the last podcast. I, I forgot, forgot about it. I, you know, I've, I've got it. Oh, you you do? Know, I, I keep it every every time every week we play. I print out the crew, and I just I've been forgetting to mention it. So they, uh, well, Jeffers was hot garbage. So yeah, there we go. Yeah. Now we know. But I, you know, it was a pretty experienced crew. You know, uh, Jeffers is, or Chaffers, whatever his name is, Chaffers. He, he's twenty-two years experience, and he's got uh, Jerry Bergman's on the crew, with twenty years experience. Uh, Jeff Seaman, twenty years experience. So you know, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Don't know. But, again, every year it seems like we have issues with refs doing <laughs> silly crap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These rule changes, man. But even with the refs against us, I think we we just dominated it. That yeah. Game. You know, it was uh, – Gronk got two touchdowns. He's tied a record. Uh, that's three games in a row with two touchdowns by tight end. Uh so he'll probably break that record next week. You know, you know, Brady and Rock are like, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. More teddies. Yes, uh, Brady has nine touchdowns in in two games. Uh, you know, he he's going to break the record this year, I'm sure, for touchdowns. And then the nine games in a row scoring thirty plus points. Oh so yes, he's broken that his own record. Yeah, broken. He's got the top three. <laughs> right. Right. That's I mean, an NFL that's a, record. That's incredible. Nine games in a row of 30-plus points. Whew. Are we going to score less than 30 all year? I don't know. Uh, if, if we're going to do it, it's going to be against the Rams. Oh, that's what I was thinking, too. Yeah. you got to get a defense that can stop us. Yeah, I think the Rams, Pittsburgh, uh, maybe Baltimore. The only teams that defensively that could might hold us to under 30. I don't know. Washington, how's their defense look? I didn't didn't really pay much attention to them in that game. I think okay. I mean, they've got Sweat and Chase Young. Mm -hmm. You know, they're pretty good on the defensive line. Yeah. So, I, I, again, best team that's ever been on the NFL field. I think. Uh, you know, it's one of those things. I I don't think we're going to realize it until we look back on it. You know how, how special this is. This team is better than any, any team. Brady's played with, I think, you know. So, I, I know I know people argue with me about that that the New England team was better, but yeah, you know, I don't think so. Uh, their punter, you know, he had, I was just thinking about he had him. two horrible Rookie, punts. It, it, his first punt was just absolutely garbage. Yeah, he was released after the game. <gasps> oh mm -hmm. no! Oh man! I don't, I don't even think he flew back with him. <laughs> No, I'm they dead like serious. You're gonna find your own way home. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I think they, I think they cut him on the field, and he had to find his own way home. Uh, what? Yeah, I'm dead serious. Are you serious? Yes. No. What's your source on that? Uh, I, I can't reveal my sources. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah. Was yeah. it? Was it Dom? What was the guy's name? Put Cameron. Yeah, N Nizielek. Yeah, yeah. The Atlanta Falcons cut punter immediately after loss to Bucks. Woo! Yes. Let me see if I can get. He's a rookie too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, it hurt him. 
Ain't not about that. We, yeah. we did have better field position than them throughout this game. <clears throat> a lot of it was, though, because they went for it on fourth down a few times and we stuffed them. Yeah. Uh, you know, we kept kept get, getting them backed up. Uh, Pinion had another great punt, put it on their on our four. Mm-hmm. Uh, they couldn't get out of there. And the, the play of the game, to me, the play of the game, the Edwards play were great. I mean, I love them. Of course, you'd love to see that. But it was Nacho. Nacho, they they were backed up. They were all, this was a uh, late in the game. Let me see. The um, they were still within striking distance, and they we stopped. We got them on the four yard line. We punted. They started on the four yard line. They got up to the thirteen, and it was third and one, and. Uh, they ran it, and Nacho busted through the line and tackled the guy four yards <laughs> behind the line of scrimmage. And this is one of those that I'm like, how did he not get penalized for taunting? Like, you know he was talking shit that whole time because <laughs> that's what he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he jumped up and yeah, kicked his legs out. And all that. Right. I don't, I don't know what is taunting. What is taunting. I don't know either. Like, what's the difference between celebration and taunting? And like, yeah, if someone's I, nearby? I, no, I think it's like you said, if you look them in the eye while you're doing anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> serious oh gosh and and that that really solidified the game they had to punt from there we got short field position because they, they had a horrible punt then we got it scored another touchdown kind of took it out of reach for them uh, but that was the that was the the play of the game if you ask me and it was good to see nacho do it god we got so many playmakers on our team he's second stringer i know and he's out there making plays yeah Gotta love it. Did you know, Ralph, we are the second run defense in the league right now. Second? I know. How wait a minute, what by what metric? I don't know. Has anybody gotten forty yards on us this year? Yeah, the Falcons did. They have fifty five. I was and then first week for forty yards, but fifty five, <laughs> come on. And then I think Dallas I forget how much Dallas got up, but um, the Carolina Panthers are first. What? Yeah. How about that game? I know. That Welcome to Jameis Winston football, <laughs> Saints fans. I know. Bucks fans, like that pick he threw, like 20 seconds left in the half or something. Oh, where he was like and, spinning around backwards and just like Oh, my God. And air. Bucks fans were like, yep, looks there's, about right. Jameis, there yeah. he is. Yeah. We but, told you. And just about every sack was his fault. He just held the ball too long, and he was just looking like crap out there. He ran a couple times, got clobbered. He got he got sacked one time. Was he running or got sacked? I can't remember. Somebody hit him from the behind. Somebody hit him from the front. He doubled over and landed right yes, on his head. Yes, landed on his neck. Yeah, I thought. I was, I was like, oh, he had two bad. neck things, yeah. two neck hits. That I was like, man, he his head's going to be hurting. His neck's going to be hurting. Yeah. That's how you get uh, some serious injuries there. Right, yeah. Um, and I thought the Panthers were very surprising. We'll have to keep an eye on them. Uh, the Saints aren't as good as everybody made them out to be. You know, mm-hmm. they beat up on the Green Bay Packers. But I'm telling you, I think the Green Bay Packers are quit. We're going to find out tonight. Yeah, we'll find out tonight. But, you know, I think there's some serious inner turmoil going on there. And you know, the Saints were just good recipients of that. But, I mean, the Panthers didn't do anything. I, I didn't think they did anything great. It just, I, I thought know. the Saints looked like crap. The Sa- New Orleans Saints fans, y'all haven't had to, had to, y'all have not had to deal with a bad offensive line since Peyton, Sean Payton and Drew Brees have been there. It's the same offensive line, and y'all are not even going to rank in the top 10, I guarantee you, because Jameis Winston will make your offensive line look bad. He did it to us. We got a top five offensive line now with the same offensive line. Yeah. <laughs> we were in the bottom half of the league. The whole time Winston was here. So that was fun to watch. Me and you really enjoyed that game. We were just <laughs> like, chuckling. <laughs> like, look at him. Look at it. Uh, back to our game real okay. quick. Uh, the penalty, another penalty against Jensen for unnecessary roughness. Remember he, the pile was Went going, into the pot. That was, the uh, whistle wasn't even blown. They didn't even blow the whistle. The pile was still moving. And Jensen hit the pile and they, then they blew the whistle. And then threw the flag. Yeah. I'm like, well, how can you do that? How can... It's just ridiculous. You know? Anyhow, 
refs suck. I agree. Yeah, and that, like I said, that Brady turnover should not have been a turnover. It was not a fumble. He his arm was moving forward, and that was a that was Donovan Smith's fault. He got tripped up off balance yeah and it really snuck up on brady to yeah, that he defender had no he had no idea that guy was back there yet uh, from what i saw i haven't looked at all 22 yet because it's not out of course the first game week's game still isn't out <clears throat> but uh, it looked like Donovan smith was having a hard time with uh, fowler and some of those guys hmm. interesting yeah you would think he's seen them enough you would think but who knows um OJ had a good appearance. He got that 21-yarder. That's the only pass he had caught, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. His yeah. only target, too. So he caught 100% of his targets. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're, they're tight end pits. I think he caught one, too. Oh, he was their leading receiver. Oh, he caught more than one? Yeah, yeah. five. Five of six targets in yeah. 73 yards. And, you know... That's another thing with people, you hear them talking about our cornerbacks are sucking, you know, or they need to step it up or whatever. And, of course, you know, it's always better. You always, It's kind of like penalties. You're like, yeah, of course you'd like to have a penalty-free game, but, you know, we still want. You know, uh, like I said last year, a lot of our problems was our linebacker coverage, not the cornerbacks, you know. And I kind of felt that way with this game, too. I think it was kind of half and half. I think our linebackers got – burned a couple times yeah and then i combine that with the bad tackling i just think you get exposed that way yeah i, I gotta watch that all 22 i want to see this bad tackling that you're talking about i you know it's uh it's one of those things i just think we did not play a complete game as much as we could have, as much as we're capable of. Mm -hmm. But I also think we're knocking off a lot of the rust, getting back into game speed. Mm -hmm. And I just think, you know, division games are so much more difficult than a lot of fans give them credit for. Like, Atlanta always plays us hard. We always play Atlanta hard. Remember last season, that Mm -hmm. second game, we were down 17-0 at the half. Mm-hmm. You know, so they're always competitive games and their roster turned over from last season. They have largely the same roster. So these guys are very experienced playing against each other, mm. playing against our team. So, you know, there was that that made it a little more difficult. I felt like on our end mm-hmm. for us. Um, and I just think it's the nature of the NFL where it's any given Sunday. Anyone can come and compete and you know, the Miami Dolphins team can go beat a Tom Brady-led Patriots team. Mm-hmm. On a, You know, it just happens. Sometimes it shakes out like that. So, uh, you know, I it wasn't as clean of a game as I would have liked in a few different areas. But we did. I mean, we beat them 48 to 25. So, I... You, I I feel like I'm kind of talking out of both sides of my mouth <laughs> where I'm like, on the one hand, I have some complaints, but on the other hand, like, how much can you really complain with a win like that? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with you. You know, I'm, <clears throat> but I, I, I'm not going to sit here and complain about the team. You know, I'm going to criticize it, hold people accountable, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, I'm going to say, nah, this is the best football team. Definitely the best football team Buccaneers have ever fielded. No doubt about that. No question. And, you know, if you're not happy with that, why do you even watch football? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like uh, this is a great football team. We're going to make mistakes. Of course yeah. we are. And we're going to have games where we play sloppy and, you know, mm-hmm. teams we shouldn't have a hard time with are going to give us a hard time. You know, we'll probably lose against teams we shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the nature of the beast. But, you know, when it comes down to it, this is entertainment. Man, God damn, this is entertainment football. This is entertaining football. It was. It was such a good game. Oh, it yeah. was a fun game. Yeah, those and coming were, away with the win. Those, yeah, those pick sixes at the end were just icing yes. on the cake. Man, that was beautiful. That's it. He totally deserved the game ball. He got the game ball. Mm-hmm. He should have. Yeah. yeah, that first interception was gorgeous. I can't believe he did not get a pass interference call on that. Well, he was going for the ball. So, okay, you know. so you're allowed to yeah, he knock a guy on his face. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, was that one tipped? Uh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh no, no, it was no. Golston. Golston came in and clobbered Ryan when he threw it. <laughs> yeah, he came in clean. He did a stunt <laughs> or a twist and came in unblocked. Yeah. And just decleated Ryan. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, and that's, that, that was the thing I don't think our, our – defense got enough credit for we pressured him all game he i mean he had no time to throw back there he was doing which we're going to see everybody do it is these quick short little passes on mm -hmm. us he had uh, to tom brady i counted quite a few times he had five six seconds you know he just standing there looking around scanning the field <laughs> Matt Ryan never had that. Oh my gosh! Yeah, no. well, and Matt Ryan only got sacked the one time, so it's kind of the stats are misleading again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's what all teams are doing against us. That's the only way you can, because like I said, you know, if nothing else, if nothing else, Vita Vey is going to get to you in two and a half seconds. That's just you know three at the max. That's if you put two people on him, mm -hmm. he's going to get to you in three seconds. <laughs> you know, if it's just one on one, he's going to get to you in two and a half. You know, so guys, they have to get the ball out quick against us. You know, that's why we're seeing so many of these outside short passes, screens, uh, you know, these dumps over the middle, you know, not a whole lot of long passes on us. And if they do, it's just a shot and a prayer. You know, they're, they're taking a seven-step drop and chunking it. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, Brady, I thought he had all the time in the world back there, and, and Matt Ryan was just running – he was he was getting pressured almost every down. So, I think our our defense didn't get enough credit for that. Okay, I liked their defense. I you know I watched Atlanta Week One against Philadelphia. I watched it like three times, and I really like their defense is almost like ours as far as scheme and everything is concerned. Mm -hmm. Man, they come at you from all different angles, and they do these weird blitzes, and you know they're dropping linebackers in the coverage, and. They're just doing a bunch of stuff. They're emulating Todd Bowles' defense. And uh, I think, it, you know, by the end of the season, they'll probably be a lot better. They that's, just don't They don't have the talent we have. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I was saying in the preview. Dean Pease, the defensive coordinator's resume is pretty impressive, and they certainly have potential mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So we'll see how it shakes out when they have a little bit more experience in the system. Yes, but I, you know, I thought I, I thought Atlanta did okay, you know. I mean, for a team that's rebuilding and mm -hmm. uh, you know don't quite have all the pieces together, you know, they didn't. They, they were out there trying, you mm -hmm. know, all the way to the very end. Yeah, you know, we yeah. saw Josh Rosen for two snaps, but or a series, right? Did we? Yeah, at the end there. Oh, they couldn't. They couldn't come back at that point. I don't remember that. <laughs> Matt Ryan threw three interceptions, so you know we had that going for us at least. Kind of oh, to counter right. Brady's fumbles, but <laughs> fumbles. He only had one. <laughs> oh right, he had one, and then Fournette had one. I thought we had three fumbles. Yeah, Fournette didn't really count there because it went out of bounds. Yeah. But oh, right, actually, right, right. actually, I think it was Godwin that knocked it out of bounds. Yeah, 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 he was kind of going for it and it went out of bounds. Isn't that a penalty when you knock it out of bounds? No. It's not? Mm -mm. Okay. I'm trying to read my notes real quick. I know, me too. I'm over <laughs> here. Uh, I know there's all kinds of stuff we haven't covered. I know. Uh, you know, Whitehead was out there. He played. I don't. I didn't remember, really see him do anything. But And I think a lot of it had to do with they just weren't going deep at all hardly you know most of their stuff was just so up front it was you know linebacker area that's funny because he's the third or the fourth had the fourth most tackles hmm. in five yeah combined was it a lot of yeah. assists yeah four solo really yeah hmm. i know and then Devin white had three quarterback hits isn't that crazy who Devin white Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a couple times he came through untouched and. Bless you. And missed uh, Matt Ryan. You know, yeah. It reminded me of Quan Alexander. Yeah, just that overshooting. Over yeah. yeah. I was like, come on, man. You could have <laughs> clobbered him. 
It was, great, it was a great game, great game. Uh, they had Scotty Miller. You know, it started off with uh, Mickens returning kicks and mm-hmm. punts, and then Scotty Miller mm-hmm. in the third quarter. They, I don't know what happened there. Maybe was, just to give him the reps. And then Giovanni Bernard got one too. Did he? And yeah. I think they had Antonio Brown out there once for a punt return. Uh, he didn't return anything, so maybe it was just a – Kicked out of bounds or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I found that very strange because, you know, Mickens had such a great week last mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. And he did pretty good this week, too. He had one return for 24 yards. Yeah. That's pretty good. They had a big return on us, but then it got called back for <laughs> uh, the guy blocked in the back, and it was plain and obvious. So good job, refs. <laughs> <laughs> C plus. Talk, yeah, C plus. <laughs> Hell no. I'd give them a D no, in this game. This game awful. was crap. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That Barrett penalty. And the, and the Jensen penalty, both. But, and the Tawny penalty. All three of those I was furious about. Mm-hmm. Even though the Tawny penalty had nothing to do with the game. It didn't hurt. It didn't help. But, man, I, I, you know, I'm like, are, are they just going to be able to throw a flag anytime they want and go taunting? Yes. Because you can't, like, replay it. Mm-hmm. I don't guess, you know, you 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 were sitting there going, what what did he do? And he can't challenge it either. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about Daryl Patterson that we had a pretty tough time with him. Although with rushing. We always do. He only had 11 yards. He averaged 1.6 yard a carry rushing. Yeah, he's that wide receiver running back hybrid. Yeah, yeah. Receiving, he averaged 11.6 yards, so. Yeah. He kind of burned us there. But then he had a return, too, uh, a kick return for 27 yards. That was the one. Was that the one where he stepped out of bounds? Or was that the run? No, that was a that was a pass. That was a pass. Okay. Yeah. Third down pass, if I recall correctly. Right. So, you know, I don't want to see him again. <laughs> I think he made it a little tricky. <laughs> well, he burned us last year. Yeah. Yeah. When he played for Minnesota. I think so. Uh, let me see. Uh, we went for it on fourth and one one time. Mm-hmm. Didn't make it. Oh, they yeah. Went- that was. Oh, yeah. That's when they put Vita Vea in at fullback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And The second time, I think. Was it? Yeah. And. I think they might have done it three times. I know they yeah. did it twice. And was that Fournette did not get it? Mm-hmm. You're well, like, they, they went for it on fourth down, I want to say, three times. Stuff. We that stuffed first them. time. Yeah, we stuffed them twice, and then okay. I think they got it one time. But, yeah, our defense was doing great. I mean, they had a lot of three and outs, and we backed them up a lot. It's and funny. We apparently are ranked. Our defense is ranked, like, horribly for the pass. Yeah, like last or nah. bottom to, bottom of the league. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. So people are freaking out on Twitter, over, overreacting. Well, it, I, I guess it depends on what metrics you go by. You right. Because it's definitely not yardage. Yeah. You know, maybe completion percentage or something. But you got to remember, th- these guys are, uh, these quarterbacks are just throwing the ball almost immediately. And, you know, they're throwing them to screens and, and crossing routes and rubs and all this stuff that's, you know, it's really hard to defend. And, and a lot of times you don't even care. You know, like, let them catch it. We'll just tackle them and then. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to have to punt eventually because they're not going to be able to move down the field. I mean, look at us. We we do chunk plays. Remember, Dirk Cutter used to talk about, uh, what do you call them? Explosive plays. 15-plus yards. I mean, we do that like every other play. <laughs> I mean, we how many times have we moved down the field 80 oh, yards at least? Like to score so touchdown? efficiently. So efficiently, yeah, in like five plays. And we do, we do it all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, that doesn't happen to us. You know, if you're going to move down the field, you're going to do it a little bit at a time. I don't know. I, I, I'll look into those stats. But, you know, again, stats are just a two. I know how two. much you love those. They're just a two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ralph, we got to wrap it up and yep. go get that kid. Yep, let's do it. It'll be a short one today. Hopefully, the game film will be out. I'll be able to look at that. We'll have a more of an analysis Wednesday. I still haven't even looked at the game field from week one that I had to get off the black market. Uh, so that, that's what I'm going to try to do for the rest of the day is kind of go through that. It's so hard to do it, though, after, you know, the, 
you've done moved on to another game, yeah. you know, to watch game film from two weeks ago. You're just kind of like, eh, I'm ready. I'm ready for the Atlanta game film, man. Mm-hmm. But hopefully it'll come out. the 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 NFL has really dropped the ball on that this year, and hopefully they'll have it. Do they have any update? No. Have you seen anything? Nothing. No. And you know, whatever, you just have to deal with what you got, man. So. Uh, that's what we got in store for you. Hopefully, we'll have another podcast out Wednesday. If not, we'll definitely have one out Wednesday. And if not, we'll definitely have one out next month. <laughs> Friday, we'll have one out Friday. <laughs> yeah, we're trying. Preview. We're we're trying to get back on schedule with this stuff, man. Yeah, I all think right. we're doing okay. We're doing all right. all right. We're doing all right. All right. All right, guys. That's gonna wrap it up for us. Till next time. Go Bucks.